for me, maybe most people don't realize is how small your voice is, but with collective action, with all these collective voices, we have the power to co-create meaning and change the world. It's very life-changing to think of your voice as something na powerful. Our guests for Episode 7 are my colleagues at the University of the Philippines, Department of Speech Communication and Theater Arts, and they teach Speech 30, which is a course on public speaking and persuasion. Please welcome to Speaking of, Ma'am Christine Magbayo and Ma'am MJ Sumilo. Now let's go to the second part, which is medyo ito fast talk ito. Okay, so very briefly answer <laughs> this question. <laughs> Hindi naman to yung fast talk na ano. <laughs> <laughs> About speech pa din ito, pero as briefly as you can, answer these questions, okay? First, do you memorize the whole speech? No. For me, in the current times, hindi na nagpa-play so much on yung memorized delivery. I think regardless of your delivery, as long as, you know, you translate ethos and you translate especially good intention and empathy, Regardless of the way you deliver, okay na yun. So, no. You never memorize speech because it makes you look inwards and outwards. And the purpose of you delivering the speech is to actually to reach out. The job to look inwards is done. Once you step on the stage, the job is to look outward. That's why those who memorize their speeches always look up always look down because they think that the words they find it in their body I don't know but you don't find it there anymore you should have done that before you step on the stage so no you never memorize a speech okay does the tire matter? <laughs> no no um, yes it has been considered <laughs> it's part of you know your non-verbals your self-presentation personally for me it doesn't matter because what matters is the message. What matters is how you reach out to your audience and how well you, you know, you deliver your point across and how well you touch them. Touch them, not physically, but how you touch them and make them think about what you want them to think about. So, di naman siya nagmamatter for me. Although, you know, our theories, our studies say that it does. Pero personally, not so much. For me, I consider attire plus points. Diba? I think it's same with MJ. If you're good, kahit naka-t-shirt ka, naka-chinelas ka, magaling ka, kung magaling ka. But, yun nga eh. Depende siya sa uh, i-deliver mo. Like, it, that's why I call it plus points. I'm really fond of the autobiographical storytelling. So, if meron akong student na gusto niya i-dramatize yung time na nag-marathon siya, it will definitely bring us back to that time if I see him in a running game. Oh, in a, but otherwise, if you're gonna deliver an informative or a persuasive speech and you have all the arguments intact, you, you, it's enough. It's enough to just go in that stage, deliver, slay it, girl. Or guy. <laughs> yeah. Conversational or formal language in a speech? I think most people would say depending on the audience. But for me, especially at the at current times, tapos yung delivery natin, virtual, ganyan, it takes a great it takes great effort, so much effort to be to build rapport. So conversational for me, conversational all the way, because Gone are the days now we think someone who speaks formally as more, you know, as more credible. And yun nga, kung ang intent mo, ang idea mo is to reach to, to reach your audience, to get something across, then the ba, mas okay, for me at least, na mas kinakausap mo sila directly, that you are telling them what's going to be best for them in the long run. If we're talking about students, I think the listeners are students mostly, definitely conversational, just like what MG said. And also, it's because of the collaboration likelihood model, which was mentioned. 
petty and kasi yung po. Uh, diba, sabi nila, you only use, uh, not only formality, you use the, the, Central. the, the logos, the direct route to persuasion if your audience has both the ability and motivation. Sen- yeah. Sorry, yeah, the, direct, the central route to persuasion if your audience both have the ability and the motivation to listen. But you have to ask yourself, at this point, do they have high ability nice. and high motivation to listen to yes, you? you yes. And the thing is, meron pa ba? Diba? If feeling mo, may ganun yung audience mo, they go for it. Go for formal language, go for straight facts, hard arguments. Otherwise, if low ang motivation or kahit may high ability at low motivation sila, you have to really go conversational. The perif- take the peripheral, peripheral route to persuasion. Yeah. yeah. So talagang audience perspective and audience analysis, very important pa din sila. What is one tip that you think every public speaker should hear? This is from Abraham Cowley. And he said, uh, and I quote, I confess I love littleness almost in all things. A little convenient estate, a little cheerful house, a little company, and very little feast. And if I were to fall in love again, it would be, I think, with prettiness rather than with majestical beauty. End of quote. Why do I like this so much? Because sometimes speakers tend to believe that they can save the world with one speech. That they can, I mean, it's good. It's good that you have the self-esteem to, to believe that you can change the world. But the thing is, you can't. You can't solve everyone's problems no matter how good of a speaker you are. And where does that lead us? Sometimes speakers will choose a topic that's so grand, that's so big. I want to talk about love in its fullest sense. And the thing is, you cannot. I always tell my students, you cannot achieve that in a three to four minute speech. Now, I want you to I always tell them, imagine what it's like holding five beach balls. They're, they're really huge. They're really big. What happens if you try to hold five beach balls in your hand? They all fall and you tumble with them. But what happens if you take a jackstone? You can just put it in the middle of your hand. You close it and take it by your heart. And that, for me, is what makes a good speech. You take something so little, but so sincere, that you can carry it around and make people look at it closely. Because you can take care of something so small, then try to crowd all the big things in one. And that's how you will be remembered, by that one small thing you can just carry around wherever you go. So, Linda. Mm-hmm. Parang buong uh, podcast episode. Mo, <laughs> and thank you, Ma'am Tin. Ma'am MJ? Inspired by Ma'am Tin, yung sinabi ni Ma'am Tin na, yes, you cannot change the world. You cannot change your audience minds and attitudes and behaviors in, in a three to four minute speech. Um, but one thing I always tell my student, or one thing I always emphasize in class, is the ability of public speaking, of rhetoric, of persuasion, to change the world. So parang ano na ba? Sobrang gusto ka ng tension. Naging din magpahayo na ako. Um, <laughs> si, so si, si Ma'am Tin kasi, very introspective siya, which is good. Pero, kunya, and it works. So I, syempre, sinasabi ko rin yan sa class. But for me, maybe most people don't realize is how small your voice is, but with collective action, with all these collective voices, we have the power to co-create meaning and change the world. And I guess yun talaga yung parang gusto kong i-advise and ina-advise yung sa students ko, especially now, especially with what the world is going through at the moment, that you may think your voice is tiny, but if you share similar voices and you have a power to, and you understand that power to influence other voices as well and to create your own realities, and to further those that reality to other communities then the ba it's very it's very life changing to think of your voice as something na powerful so i with that advice kasi for me parang you're you're empowering them na oo requirement lang to for the class 
or oh, when you make them post a tweet about their advocacy. Yes, that's one tweet. But when how many followers do you have? 500 fo- followers read that tweet and share the same sentiment and you create th- that meaning for them. And then, di ba, uh, ano siya, parang si dance model. <laughs> parang ever-increasing yung yeah. scope niya. Then, that's what we fail to realize. That's why I also tell my students na, be mindful also. Pero ibang topic na yun. Be mindful of what you what you say. Mm-hmm. Because your voice has a power even though we don't realize it. And lalo-lalo ngayon, use that power. Use it wisely. Use it. Use your capability, your clout on social media to really influence others with what you think will be good for others as well and not just for yourself. Ang ganda. Ang ganda ng reality check ni Ma'am Tin. Pero ang ganda rin nung sinabi ni Ma'am MJ na that reality check has a big impact then, lalo na when these speeches turn out to be collective actions for people. Second to the last question, who is one public speaker that you admire? Meron ba? Meron bang nag sa stand out sa inyo bilang isang public speaker? Uh, spoken word artist Shane Quezizan. Uh Shane not sure if Quezizan or Quezizan is how you say his name, Shane Quezizan. He's the one who delivered blueprint for a breakthrough. He's the one who said the line, if your heart is broken, make art to the pieces. I'm not sure if it's that if it's from that poem, pero kasi he always addresses his uh he's trying to make amends with his past. He was bullied. And lahat ng spoken word poems niya, bumabalik siya doon sa part na nabuli siya. And I like it because um he responds to what matters to him in a way that helps other people realize this also matters to me. And it's so it's so sincere because you know, I I also this siguro, I like spoken word poetry as a poetry. Of course, my debate is this real poetry is this not mm. real poetry? And daming yung ganon de ba sa literary circles. But his work is accessible. And for me, a good speech. Mom MJ mentioned, of course, content arrangement. But for me, content and arrangement must be delivered in beautiful language for it to have the best impact. And I think Shane Quezizan does exactly that. He has that ethos, pathos, and logos. So even if it's not, it's it's creative. It's more creative than persuasive, but everything is rhetorical. So the fact that this man is standing in front of you telling you he was bullied, but he was able to, you know, grow up and make something of himself despite that bad experience makes you think, I can do that too. So I really, really, really like it. Currently, I admire AOC a lot, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, because yung, the way she speaks is not super, super formal, um, but you can get a sense that she is sincere and that her past Diba, she comes from the workforce, ganyan. And that, mm. translates, that translates to how she talks and what she speaks about without being too... Alam yun, it's, it's a thing with maybe politicians that may, hanggang ngayon, meron pa barrier between being a public figure and a politician and the general public. But her speeches tend to reach out more and she shares so much of herself with her audience kasi. And that translates a lot. That's why I like her. Tapos, um, every so often, di ba may YouTube siya, tapos every so often, nag-release siya ng skincare video, ganyan. And more than relatability, for me, she seems very human. And for me, she's a good public speaker because lahat tayo, humans. And that's maybe as a public speaker and maybe as a part of an audience, we, we, fail to realize that speakers are humans too. And hindi siya appeal to persuade, but rather something that we need to remember when we're talking in front of the public na, ayun nga, parang, parang sinasummarize pa lang what everything was meant, what we mentioned kanina na introspectively, um, we 
if we want to talk about something we're passionate about, um, lalabas yun at mag-translate yun into words. So AOC for me is able to do that and able to do that well. For our last question, datanong ko sana what makes a good speech great eh. Pero I think we have already discussed that. So for my last question, what is your pet peeve in a speech? Ano yung ayaw na ayaw niyong marinig <laughs> sa isang public speech? Ako meron, meron ako meron. Okay, so it's one, it's something that's been highlighted lalo ni Kenneth Burke with um, the theory of identification. Diba yung parang tinatry mo to find your common ground and you try to identify with your audience. My pet peeve is the use of pronouns such as tayo or we ng speaker pero hindi naman talaga belong yung speaker in that community. Yung parang misuse or false use of identification as a device. Kasi, syempre, siguro tayo, mas critical tayo na we get that, that irritates us. Pero, kapag sa masa or sa people na hindi familiar with these, you know, rhetorical concepts, for me, that's deceitful. Parang, you're being deceitful as a speaker na gusto mo, ano, parang masa rin ako, galing ako sa mahirap, ganyan, pero hindi talaga. Parang, that, goes against everything I've talked about today na dapat, di ba, what's good for your audience, sincerity, yung sinabi ni Ma'am Tin, Frenesis, Arete, Yunoya, it goes against that if you're trying to make yourself or package yourself something that you are not through the use of those pronouns, ganyan, or through the use of imagery, alam niyo yan, may mga politicians tayong ganyan. Yun yes. yung number one pet peeve. Authenticity is key. Yes. Thank you very much, Ma'am MJ. Ma'am Tin, sabi ni Philip Lopez, wow, nagpo-post ka. Oh, he's an American <laughs> film, film critic. And sabi niya, some vulnerability is essential to make the rhetoric of sincerity work. And what do we mean by, by that? A lot of times, speakers tend to fake their emotions. And they think we can't sense that. Right. But the thing mm. is, we can. Like, for example, you want to deliver about losing your dog and you're trying to make the speech sound sad. But you know you're not sad anymore. Why so you can't... <laughs> <Sige. laughs> you, you can't because feel something that you are not feeling anymore. Okay. So parang don't fake it. You have to just be honest with your, with, with, with your emotions talaga. And because MJ started with deceit, eh, that's why yun yung quote talaga na nag... Uh, naalala ko. And also, the speaker, sometimes, they tend to build themselves up so much. But, mm-hmm. diba, what happens if someone always tries to build himself or herself up? Do we like that person? What's, what's the very, what's the Filipino reaction to that? Eh, di ikaw na. We're, that's the rhetoric of ikaw na eh. Parang pag nakakakita ka ng sobrang, ay, ang galing niya, sinabi niyang magaling ka. Ay, sinabi niyang magaling siya ang reaction mo as, as a member of the audience, o di ikaw na, magkaiba tayo. So it's creating division. What do we want? We want someone to root for. And how can we root for someone? We root for someone who's vulnerable. Someone who's not perfect, but is trying. So that's also the speaker I want to see. And pet peeve ko talaga yung parang, oh, ano na sabi mo na na ginawa ko to, nag... <laughs> Punta ka na dito. Okay, and then what? Ano, gag- ano gusto mong gawin ko sa experiences na yan? I can't root for you. I can't want you to win because you keep telling us that you already won. We want to see the process because we want to learn from you. We don't just want to listen to a story of a perfect person. We want to listen to a story of someone who struggled before he or she became victorious. So okay. that. So don't yes. your emotions. True. And to add to that, <laughs> parang naisip ko lang na if you want, di ba, someone, if you want to see someone na you want to root for, tapos maganda rin siyang device in your public speaking na if that person is able to make the audience part of that feat of that victory, di ba, na with you guys, you can help me win this whatever I'm advocating for. Parang ano rin siya, rhetorical device that you guys can use. 
Yes. Let me end this podcast with a statement from Ma'am Tinch. She said that we are not perfect, but we are trying. And I think that's a good learning point for a lot of our listeners. Diba? That as public speakers, we're not perfect, but we're trying. And uh, thank you to Ma'am Tin and Ma'am MJ because that is such a good realization na really the foundation of a great speech is preparation. Diba? What you can control right now, what you can prepare for right now, control and prepare for it before you do your public speeches. Thank you again, Ma'am Tin and Ma'am MJ, for being here and for sharing your uh, stories of being and becoming. And I do hope that our listeners learned a lot about uh, preparing for their public speeches that they can use in their own speeches in the future. Thank you, Ma'am MJ. Thank you, Ma'am Tin. And thank you to our listeners. And see you next. Uh, see you in our next episode. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.